G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Good, Bad and Ugly. In this video today, we're going to be unpacking, reviewing all the action from round 15 of the 2023 AFL season. Just the six games that we will review game by game. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. That'll be heavily appreciated. And let's get straight into it. So with round 15, another six games we did have the final buy rounds of this season. Probably was an improvement from last week. We saw a bit better quality with uh, with the number of games, a few closer games, two cracking ones, um, and a few expected results uh, splashed out across the round. But the first one we had Thursday night footy, Cats getting a much needed win at home uh, against the Melbourne Demons. Uh, there were questions about Geelong heading into this game prior with their game last week. Their midfield looked were just was just torn apart from that Port Adelaide side, but you probably would have given them a bit of faith. Back at GMHBA, they play their best brand there, and they sure were able to put those words into effect with a blistering fourth term, kicking six goals to one. How they were able to do it is just simply the transition, the end-to-end -end ball movement. They had those loose plays at the back. They moved the ball with a lot more down that fourth term, and the Ds, I felt they were pretty strong throughout the mo and defensively pretty strong throughout most of that night, but just they collapsed um, in that fourth term. They locked the ball in uh, with multiple stoppages, but they just let those goals at the back. Gary Rowan was magnificent, knocking out his own teammate, but after that, he really did lift for the Cats. Probably was one of the best on ground with three goals and 16 touches, which is athletic. He showed his pace, still has plenty of athleticism and pace in those old 32 or 33 year old legs, was a big part uh, of their win. And yes, no danger field was the issues heading into this game, but hey, Tanner Bruin is really starting to lift I think for the Cats midfield in there. Max Holmes with a decent game as well. Brad Close even moving onto the ball a little bit as well. 24 touches he had. I thought he was really impactful. Brought really good pressure. But let's be honest, this first three quarters was a complete log jam. Just a really scrappy sort of play. Both teams really defending quite well. But the game broke apart in that fourth term with just the Cats running away with it. And as for the Ds, well, I thought they were probably in control for the majority of the game. The third term... They were keeping the door open. They were terribly inaccurate. Both teams were pretty inaccurate throughout most of this game, but they were keeping the door open. Melbourne getting a few more repeated entries. They looked the goods just, I guess you could say, probably a little bit uh, convincingly the better side. But yeah, that fourth term, they really did... Uh yeah, throw it away, unfortunately. They got outdone, out-fatigued, um, and I felt they'd lost a little bit of intensity and pressure around the ball. So, yeah, a bit of a loss to forget for Melbourne, but losses like that to happen for all kinds of teams. But, uh, yeah, they really need to bounce back and get back on the horse. Move on now to Friday night's game with the Brizzy Lions with a much-needed win over the Saints by 28 points, and it was pretty much Brisbane all night long. The Saints had a few goals. You know, they always you know, quite plucky and they were peppering with a few goals back, but it just always seemed to be Brisbane were able to respond. Their defence was good enough, led by Harris Andrews, just superb in the air. He had something like over 15 intercept possessions, a whole heap of marks. He was just bossing it in the back half and helped by Leicester and Payne. I thought those players did really good jobs. Obviously, Payne goes to the number one key forward whilst, uh, you know, Andrews is sort of able to work off that um, and he was just at his best. Um, all Australian sort of form best and uh, that certainly was on Friday night. And just setting up from the back beautifully well, they were strong. Um, I felt they really bullied St. Kilda's midfield. The Saints just didn't look up to it um, in terms of uh, being a genuine chance in this game. Completely outdid them in stoppage and around the ball. Um, and they were just deadly in their forward half. They always are a really good side um, in their forward half, the Brisbane Lions. And yeah, the Saints... Again, just with their defense, it just seems against opposition um, that take the game on and play that fast ball movement and are very good off the turnover. They seem to struggle, and they seem to struggle to put on enough scoreboard pressure and enough points. Um, and, you know, apart from Dan Butler, who I think's generally been in really good form, probably, um, you know, I felt he was uh, quite decent in this game. They just didn't offer enough um, in their forward half. And, and continuing on with the Saints, they are now starting to enter into a bit of a deja vu period. They always are not a very good second half of the year side. So I feel like something does need to change, because if you generally look at the last month, few months or so, they haven't been at their best um, compared to the start of the year. They've really dropped off, I think, a little bit defensively. But the most important thing is just how they score themselves. I don't think it is um, they're doing it too convincing at the moment. They don't put on enough points. Um, they just got outclassed by that Brisbane midfield and struggle with a lot of foot skills out of the back half. I felt like they had too many turnovers in their back half. Brisbane I would execute, um, and yeah, they were just they were just too close tonight. Brisbane Lions, Lockie was really good, 29 touches. Dunkley again having a really good year. He was really impactful in this game. I did feel Joe Dunaher and Eric Hipwood were really good in this game as well. I still feel Eric Hipwood is a very underappreciated and probably overhated player. He gets criticised a little bit too much, but I just still think you know you have Dunaher sort of working a bit higher up the ground. Hipwood staying deep. I still feel. 
he does the job pretty well. He, would he still get some good statistics? He can still kick goals, and I think he is averaging a good amount of goals this year. Um, and he is, you know, he's a very good mark. And I just think at the moment, Dunner and Hipwood are working really well together. And there is something with them at Marvel Stadium. They're not so great at the MCG, but at Marvel, they are pretty strong. I think the last 11 times, uh, they've won their 10. So, yeah, they, they, they're really good. Uh, got the job done. They're, they're nothing like extraordinary Brisbane. I felt it was at the expense of the Saints playing pretty poor. But just the top four team, they are, I think, Brisbane. They just need to tick over these wins. They got the job done. Um, and they did well enough to, yeah, have a pretty good performance and get it done at Marvel Stadium by a convincing margin. And now we move on to one of the most insane games you'll ever see this year. Well, insane meaning not close, but score-wise that is, the Swans putting on over 200 points against the West Coast Eagles. For my boys, it was sensational to see a, a really good high-confidence win. Hopefully that does boost a little bit of confidence in the playing group heading into the next few weeks, because with 16% gain, this has put the Swans back into sort of the finals mix. If they can beat Geelong next Friday night, um, if they can beat them convincingly, I think they're temporary in the eight. And let's remember they are 15th before this game, but they were really strong. Uh, but of course, most has to be said about the Eagles. Just terrible. Lack of effort, lack of intensity. Um, they were just deplorable. Again, not really much else can be said about it. it. Week by week, they're getting belted in the inside 50s. 77 to 34 it was. Felt they did okay around the ball, but they just eventually did get whacked in especially center clearances. 22 to 11. Um, a lot of their senior players... Obviously, Shuin, I felt Kelly were quite good, and you know, Yo was quite decent as well. But you have Andrew Guff, who's just been awful um, as of late. You know, Duggan back there as well, with it and was struggling. Um, and as a whole, they just had a, a barely no defensive pressure at all. Um, a lot of the Swans' goals were from end to end. They could just waltz around them. They could walk around them. There was that moment with Chad Warner, who's just literally cutting, weaving his way through. You know, with the play like Chad Warner, that takes the game on. He obviously had a massive day out, but yeah, the Eagles were just terrible. Questions, of course, raised on Adam Simpson. I think he is fine at the moment, but I'm not really um, in the position to talk too much about West Coast as I'm not a fan. The fans obviously know more than me, but I still feel when you look back on West Coast, 2019, 2020 sort of um, days, I felt um, Adam Simpson wasn't too great to recognize that they are starting to enter into a bit of a period where they need to rebuild, but he was reluctant to, you know, do that change. And I still feel it's probably what the board's decision as well. Maybe the CEO thought, you know, we're not going to be turning the direction of rebuilding. We're just going to continue to bring these players in like Tim Kelly um, and et cetera. Uh, but it just isn't working the moment. It's really now come back to haunt them. They have the exact sort of same midfield from 2019 um, and they are getting belted by 171 points. So and an ugly display. Um, they just need the offseason to come quick. They need to have a really good draft. They just need more and more young talent, um, I think, to replenish their list. A few players may have to retire too, uh, but just overall, just a pathetic performance uh, from West Coast. But yeah, for the Swans, obviously, you know, a lot, um, pretty much all of it has to be said about West Coast, but hey, I still feel for a team to kick over 200 points is very good. Um, and I felt for the Swans, they haven't been able to do it against good teams this year, but against the worst of teams they have been able to. Uh, but it was just a really strong performance all around from Sydney. You know, Isaac Heaney with five goals. Chad Warner was really good. Errol Goulden, um, I feel, like even against some pretty good quality opposition, he's been really, really good. Another 30-plus disposal game, 32 and three goals. Might be a little bit of bias, but I feel like this guy's got to be into the more of the All-Australian talks on a wing because he has been playing on the wing as of late. He's just been so good. The effective kicks... Always a shot for goals are very accurate too. Angus Sheldrick with 29 touches. He's becoming a really solid player for them in that midfield. Um, a bit of a, the first round draft pick from a 2021, I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, but yeah, they're just uh, just a really strong performance all around from Sydney. Just what they needed. You know, confidence up, maybe some egos boost as well. They just now need to head into the next few weeks against some good quality opposition. Join them next week. And do they now start to make a bit of a run? Because they're in a good position now to get a few, few wins in a row and maybe make a push for finals in the last few rounds of this season. We move on now to the Saturday night game. The Freo Dockers with a much needed win over the Bombers by 32 points. They were at their best on Saturday night. They were really good defensively. They were strong in their back half and their ball movement was really strong again. Took the game on. Their midfield for me was the difference maker um, in this game. Sarong and Brayshaw, few ones to name. They were just so strong in there. After that first term, they were just dominant um, in, in center clearances. They out-hunted the Essendon midfielder. Felt a few Essendon midfielders were not at their particular 
particularly great is they just got, um, you know, structure-wise, they just fell apart, the Bombers. Um, they got out-hunted. The intensity was on a whole different level um, from the Dockers. And, yeah, for the Dons, they didn't really bring much pressure. Um, and in going when going in their forward half, one player we have to name is Luke Jackson. He is just their massive focal point down there. Questions were arose at the start of the year. He wasn't really working their forward half, but... If they can get that Darcy and Jackson mix working really well, they're just going to blitz. And I felt they got it really, um, you know, they got it done to perfection because Jackson was just their main target um, down four. Because if you, you know, when you think about it, you know, you got a miss down there, you know, you got Tracy. Sometimes they aren't the greatest options necessarily um, in the marking contest. But with a player like Jackson, he's able to bring it to the ground. He's able to take some really good clunks. He took a lot of contested marks um, uh, on Saturday night. He was awesome. And he definitely brought his shooting boots, kicking three goals really accurate seven marks um, and he was able to do a little bit in the ruck too but he's just such a huge huge influence to their side when he's up and about Jackson of course Sean Darcy back in there as well just improves the team structure and their clearance game um, and a few players to name it definitely was Liam Henry's best game in his career finding his home along the wing and he was really good there he was demanding the footy he had eight marks he had 32 touches he was just lively across that side of the ground um, and definitely made an impact uh, on the scoreboard as well with a lot of inside 50s uh, and then Luke Ryan at his best with 18 marks sort of playing like a James Sisley sort of style uh, but yeah for the Bombers Coming off the bye, always unexpected. I felt they were a good chance here. I actually did tip them, um, given they've been really, really competitive um, against multiple teams, um, especially um, around the country as well. I think they've been quite decent interstate, but maybe it's just after the bye, and they are still, let's remember, a very young side, Eston, and very inexperienced, so these results are sort of going to happen. I wouldn't be um, too quick to ride off the Bombers. Still are seeing in the eight, but they obviously need to pick it up from what we did on Saturday, what we did see on Saturday night. Started the game off really well, and I felt, hey, the Bombers do look really good here. They were controlling the game early on. A lot of un uncontested marks. Um, they sort of live to play that side, of course, the Dons, but they just couldn't find a way to beat it with Freo's defense. I felt their pressure is really good. They're always locking down those options, um, and they just failed to win the ball um, in the contest enough and at grand level, and they lacked a lot of pressure. Um, I did feel as well. Jai Menzi with a quiet game. Um, you know, Sam Durham had one of his poor games uh, this year too. You know, Guelphie bobbed up with a goal too, but they just couldn't um, show enough influence around the ball um, and got out hunted. And can the Dockers now start to get a few wins in a row, start to have Optus Oval as a bit of a fortress because they were really, really strong on Saturday night. Pressure elite, defense elite, and of course their ball movement looked superb with a few star performances in there. 100% this next game here was the game of the round. The Pies getting another classic win by two points against the Adelaide Crows. If you're a fan, if you're not a fan of the Pies, if you're a neutral like myself, you got to love what Colin and I are doing this year. It has just been sensational. Sort of a bouncing off what they did last year. Just the close wins. They are so good in those fourth terms because, hey, the Crows' third term was just just an absolute blitz. They were able to finally kick accurate after a poor first half of inaccuracy. Kicking eight goals to Zilch in that third term. Taylor Walker was the star of the show for the Crows um, in their loss. He was just beautiful. He's just, um, you know, he's he's sort of like a aging like a fine wine sort of player. You know, even at 33 years of age, he's strong one-on-one. -on -one. He still kicks some really good snags on the run, on the snap, and especially with the set shots as well. And throughout stage of that game, I felt the Crows were really able to nullify um, the Pies' attack. They were really good, sort of similar to what the Demons did. They were able to really push up when they were doing a, full, a few of those, um, you know, handball chains, and they were really good on the intercept. You know, a few players to name, oh, Murray and Butts and Hinge were really strong uh, for the Crows today. Uh, and then, of course, in the midfield, Jordan Dawson was superb. His, his third term was out of this world, had over 35 touches, 10 tackles. He was a brute force in that midfield, and just with that beautiful left boot of his, picking out options in their forward 50. But the Pies got the job done in that fourth term. The fourth term was honestly one of the best quarters I saw this year. Both teams' intensity was just superb. And honestly, as a neutral, I felt this game could have deserved to be a draw, just given how good both teams were. No respect lost from both sides. So I guess with the good, bad, and ugly sort of concept, don't really think there are um, any bads or uglies necessarily. Maybe the umpiring, you know, obviously a lot of people are complaining about that. But as I like to say, don't like to look at that too much. I just like to look at the play itself because it just was really strong um, from both teams. But it always just seems to be undefendable threat times of games. The Pies in that fourth term able to hit a lot of goals through the transition. You know, Mason Cox kicking two in a row in that fourth quarter. Nick Dacos's fourth term. And I, even Josh Dacos's game, always underappreciated player. 
they were so important um, in that fourth quarter when it really mattered. Dacos just ran the ball, hitting those options inside 50 and kicking a goal himself. Uh, you know, Will Hoskin Elliott, of course, getting sort of that match winner. And yeah, the Tex with five goals um, was really superb too. And a close finish, but yeah, that 50-50 moment with John Noble was just the play of the game, I felt, uh, for the Pies, winning that huge 50-50, locking it in outside um, their defensive 50. And another close win for the Pies. Unfortunately, no revenge for Adelaide as they do drop another game against Collins with this year under a kick but the pie's just too good in the end superb game to watch alongside the Dacos brothers you know Mitchell was really strong in there he's in he's been in some really good form as of late numbers was 27 touches felt Brad Amada was really strong in the fence Penelbury honestly felt his game was really impactful too um, throughout multiple stages of that game but yeah yeah just the pies another classic win one of the best games I felt this year um, and they were just too good in the end again felt it could have been a draw but uh, yeah you gotta have a bit of luck sometimes um, and unfortunately the Crows didn't have it but but yeah, another close one for the Maggies, and they move to the top of the table. And for the final game of the round, we had the Suns with a huge win over the Hawks by 67 points. Uh, nothing against the Hawks. I do absolutely love watching them this year with the good performances they've been able to string together. But I just felt the Suns were easily going to come into this game and boss it um, and pick up a huge result. Because it's just always with the Suns at home, um, at you know up in Queensland and even in Darwin, they always are really strong there. I um, mean, if you do look at their record at Darwin at home this year, it is actually pretty strong too. So just get also given the inexperience... And and the young side of the Hawks, they aren't always going to play flashy footy this year. They have struggled a little bit interstate. They've had four big losses there interstate now, including this one. Uh, but yeah, the Suns just too good. Start of the game, uh, well, the Hawks started really well, kicked the first three goals of the game. Mitch Lewis had two goals, but um, yeah, maybe it's just after the bye. Um, that's always a bit of an impact. After quarter time, they just fell flat, um, really got out hunted in that midfield. The Suns were able to really move the ball freely, and they picked up and they improved what they did um, from their horror show last week. The center clearance felt they were really strong in that sort of regard. 6-8 inside 50s to 37 absolutely belted them and it just is another case for Hawthorne of no Sicily, no Hawks. They just lost um, a really key part back there. You know, Sam Frost back in the team really struggled and he's a bit of a whipping boy um, as we do like to say. Um, yeah, there was obviously a lot of possession getters for the Hawks in their back half but just weren't able to move the ball enough with much dare um, and there's just honestly nothing after quarter time from the Hawks. It was a dismal performance but hey, it is obviously going to happen with a young and inexperienced side. Um, you know, they're not going to play the greatest footy week by week but yeah, the Suns just always good at home. I felt they would really bounce back and they sure did. Huge game. You know, I've seen two goals in 28, a little bit of junk um, in that fourth term. Uh, wasn't really his greatest day necessarily. But hey, Barrett Braden Fiorini with a lot of midfield time had 35 disposals. One of the best on ground, I had to say. Charlie Ballard again was really strong. Did a superb job on Kaczynski and also, of course, Collins did a really good job on Mitch Lewis after quarter time. But overall, really good team effort. Felt Sam Flanders back on the team was really good in their midfield. Malcolm Rosas went just bang in that second half. Kicked goals for fun. Mark Andrew, defensively, he's shown his poise down back as well. Uh, one of more rounds, quite a game. Just overall, really good team performance. But yes, for the Hawks, a game to forget. For the Suns, a percentage booster. That now puts them in a good position uh, for the eight. But they've got tough tasks now. They've got the Pies at home next week, and then they've got Port Adelaide away, so it's going to be tough for them, but um, yeah, just just what they needed. I felt the Suns dominant um, around the ground, and especially in the contested game, out doing the Hawks, and picking up a big one at home. So everyone, there was another episode of the Good, Bad and Ugly for round 15 of the 2023 AFL season. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to enjoy today's video. That would be much appreciated, and until next time, I will talk to you later. See you later, fellas.